All right, everyone, now we have to talk about, especially in Michigan, Arab American voters. I don't like hyphenated Americanism, so I'm just going to use the colloquial. I think that if you're born in the United States or you've been naturalized or you've immigrated properly and gotten your green card, you're just an American. I don't care about your skin color, your religion, all that bullshit. Uh, it's like uh, the average person doesn't say, well, I'm an Irish American. No, no, you're just an American. You just happen to like to boil your food for eight hours uh, <laughs> and drink too much. Uh, stereotypes aside, there is a large cohort in Michigan especially, Dearborn area, of people of Arabic ancestry. Again, some of these people more recent immigrants, some of these people were born in the United States, uh, but there are hundreds of thousands of them. And they vote. And this is bad for Joe Biden because over the Palestine-Israel thing, they're beginning to flock to Donald Trump. It was explained in this article, link in the description, archived, of course, <clears throat> one individual question about it said, well, if you're talking about one person supporting the genocide of my people, although you're probably not Palestinian, uh, and one person who wanted to, uh, to ban travel, of course, the so-called Muslim travel ban that was never really about Islam anyway, then I'll take the latter, uh, which would be Donald Trump. And that's a fairly pragmatic view. If, one, if you feel, I, I don't agree with this, but if you feel that one person doesn't care if people like you are slaughtered to non-existence, genocidally, and another person simply saying, well, there's going to be a travel ban, which one are you going to prefer? I mean, it's, it's maybe a lesser of two evils sort of option there, but it does make pragmatic sense, if that is your opinion. Again, I don't personally agree with that, just to be, just to be clear. Uh, there was never any Muslim travel ban under Trump. There's no genocide specifically going on in Gaza. It's a slow-rolling crushing of an entire people. It's not a genocide yet, though, because there are still like two million people left in the Gaza Strip. I do feel sorry for them. I condemn some of the actions of the IDF lately, and apparently some of the first units involved now, uh, even the United States is saying they committed war crimes. Well, when the United States is saying that an Israeli unit committed war crimes, you can pretty much take it to the bank now, can't you? Just pointing that out. We have a tendency not to criticize Israel too much in the United States, uh, not without good reason. Uh, you know, it's called being re-elected. <laughs> it's basically the long and short of it with evangelical voters, too. Um, if, if Joe Biden loses this relatively left-leaning cohort of voters, like, they don't even have to vote for Trump, they just fucking stay home and say, I'm, I refuse to support uh, Joe Biden, je refuse. Um, he loses, and if he loses Michigan, he loses the election, and I think that he knows this. That's why you've seen a slight changing in messaging over the last few days with regards to the Israel-Palestine thing. The Biden administration right now has all sorts of problems on its plate already. Inflation, which the, their economic messaging astroturfed carefully through the legacy media is not working. You've got the border crisis. They're trying to blame it on Trump, which is absolutely laughing stock levels of hilarity. Uh, <laughs> the other day, I'm like, uh, when I first saw that article the other day, the fluff piece, I think it was from Yahoo News, uh, talking about how the Biden administration should uh, should embrace the situation and then say, well, it was evil Don that did this because uh, he, he didn't do enough and he, he uh, downed the... Uh, uh, the so-called bipartisan accord with regards to the border situation. Oh my god, I, I was chuckling to myself. I'm like, what planet are you people living on? They actually think that's a good strategy. I think that they're probably wrong. But uh, he's already got all these other problems in Ukraine and all these things, uh, potentially Taiwan, Guyana. Uh, then you've got this crisis. Um, but if, if, it, if it impacts this specific cohort of voters, that becomes an, an even bigger problem. If the voters that get turned off to you are sort of like, it's a patchwork all across different states. Okay, if it's in a blue state, it doesn't matter. If it's in a red state, it doesn't matter. Those states, 35 of the U.S. states are already spoken for. We already know how they're going to vote, barring divine intervention. There are a handful of states that are either directly or indirectly competitive. Michigan is one of them. Trump has been leading consistently in Michigan, and now you have a large cohort of voters that largely disapprove of Joe Biden if they are single-issue voters on that issue. But even if they're not single-issue voters, let's say that they care about that, but they also care about the economy and the border and stuff like that, well, they're still going to turn against Biden because he's doing such a shit job. Joe Biden should be 15 points underwater right now as, as far as the uh, general election matchup. If it weren't for a non-stop 24-7 wall of propaganda aimed at Donald Trump, if it weren't for poisoning the well and if it weren't for the lies being spewed out literally constantly and daily about him, 
Donald Trump would have a double-digit lead over Joe Biden right now. Easily. It wouldn't even be close. We'd be headed for the biggest historical landslide election probably in U.S. history. It'd sort of be like Reagan's re-election bid on steroids, or, or Nixon's re-election bid. Probably not the greatest example you can draw for Donald Trump, although they will probably try to remove him from office again. They'll say, oh, a historic fifth impeachment, yeah, we got him this time, or some bullshit like that. You know that they will. I believe this, and I'll give you an anecdote. I've had two different individuals message me that live in Michigan, they're, they're Muslims, uh, you know, because I've remarked on this issue before, and they corroborated. In our community, um, Joe Biden is, is very much disliked. Uh, Trump is not necessarily liked. It's not that they like the dude uh, or all of his policies. They may even see him as Islamophobic. But then they're like, well, Joe Biden is actively promulgating this situation. I think another part of it is the absence of diplomatic... Uh, ability within the Biden administration. So with Donald Trump, for example, they, they would say uh, Donald Trump is obviously pro-Israel, uh, and he's made that very clear. But he would engage in meaningful diplomacy to try to secure a ceasefire, to try to calm things down so that people don't die, so that the, the, the seeming calm of the past is restored, so people's lives are saved. And that that's preferable to Joe Biden, whose administration has its head up its ass so far that it's poking out the mouth and going back into the ass a second time, somehow this is physically possible when you're Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, or Antony Blinken, they're so screwed up that there's not even an attempt. There's no meaningful attempt at diplomacy. And I think that's frustrating people. I know it frustrates me, not just because of Israel v. Palestine. U.S. messaging on that is, you know, it's basically like uh, throwing a dart at a dartboard every given day to find out exactly where the administration stands. It's more than that. It's on Taiwan, it's on Ukraine, it's on border policy, it's on crime policies, it's on taxes, it's on everything. The administration has no messaging, and nobody knows what the administration is going to do next. It's a, a, Supposedly Trump was the chaos president. No, 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 that's Joe Biden. Under Trump, it was pretty formulaic what he was going to do. The only th unknown was what mean tweet he was going to make today. That was the chaos. Oh, is he going to attack CNN? Maybe he'll sideswipe Fox News today. Ha <laughs> ha, the world may never know. Let's uh, tune in more at 4. 24-7 you know, coverage of Donald Trump's Twitter account would probably be pretty popular, assuming he gets his ass back on Twitter, and I really hope he does. With Biden, it's the policy that's chaotic. You don't know where the policy is, especially on diplomacy. On diplomacy and, and foreign politics in general, I don't know what the fuck Joe Biden stands for, and neither do the so-called Arab American voters. They don't know what he's going to do next. He, I mean, he could make a speech tomorrow where he roundly condemns Israel, and then turn around five hours later talking to the press and condemn Palestine. I mean, that's a, it's a microcosm of the whole administration. I don't know where any of these people stand on the issue. You know, Blinken will say, well, I'm hopeful that uh, the uh, Hamas will accept these, uh, this ceasefire proposal, a 40-day ceasefire, I guess, and uh, uh, Israel will pull back and release prisoners if they'll release all the remaining hostages, <laughs> who may or may not be alive, by the way, in general. All of them have been raped by now, by male, female, young and old alike, so, you know, they've, uh, they've been through a lot. It would be nice to get the uh, hostages out of there. But then uh, Israel might balk and, and they might down it and say, well, you know, what reassurance do we have? They won't just take more hostages. Grab some of those IDF women off the battlefield and turn them into concubines or something like that. And so the fighting will continue. Trump could probably handle the situation. But another thing that these voters should probably understand is that if Trump had been reelected, it wouldn't have happened in the first place. Do you genuinely think that Hamas would have paraglided across the border and taken hundreds of hostages, necessitating a response by Israel of this caliber, if Trump had been in the White House and Western leadership actually had a central figure that was able to negotiate and coordinate things, as opposed to having what we have now in the United States, which is an oligarchic system. We have a bunch of oligarchic plutocrats that constantly backstab and undermine one another, sometimes on purpose, and we also have a checkerboard fucking Western world in general for military purposes and diplomatic purposes. There's no central leader to hold things together. It's completely absent. It's like Rome without an emperor. The Senate is running everything right now. Well, <laughs> you know, not necessarily the most efficient thing in the world, senators. That's about all. Peace out.